here's why the owner wants to do that. And this is part of the reason of what you have to convince them to do is this here. Let's assume they're doing $948,000 in revenue. If we come back, you're telling the owner, I'm coming in, help me structure the deal where um, the SBA is going to fund the deal. You get money and, and by retaining equity in the company, as I grow out the company, you're going to get additional value down the road as I grow the company. So here's what this looks like. You take a million dollar company and you grow to $10 million in new revenue. Now the owner, by keeping 9% equity in the business, they sold their company to you for 949,000 and then they get an additional $900,000 of future value whenever you sell your company or at some point in the future, they can say, hey, buy out my 9% because I gave you a super friendly deal so that you can buy the business when you came into the company. Now that it's worth $10 million, I'd like for you to buy the company back. So 10%, now again, I just did it based upon revenue, but you know, uh, the value of a company can be valued many different ways. And, uh, but 10% is a potentially $900,000 of, of value. So instead of getting 949,000, they get 1.8, $1.9 million for the company. They sold it to you and then they get to sell it again twice for additional value at a future date. So these are how you do a deal structure, right? The owner has to be motivated. The owner has to be willing to be a little bit more flexible in terms of deal structure. Now, again, if the owner doesn't want to keep equity, right? Because some owners, they're like, hey, I, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do anything. Then what you have to do is you have to structure where 15% owner financing comes from them. If the, if the SBA is willing to do 90%, then they only need to do 10%. And in that situation, there's still zero money out of your pocket. So this is deal flow, how you structure a deal so that it's minimal money out of your pocket. Now, there's still some money you have to put into this. You have to pay for an attorney to review, uh, to review the, the agreement. You still have to pay a CPA just because they gave you audited financials. Most small companies are not going to have audited financials. They work with a broker or they work with a CPA to pre prepare financials for you to review. But don't take the words for it, right? You need a CPA to review the financials with you. So there may be some additional costs, you know, a few thousand dollars out of your pocket to hire an attorney to review the document and hire a CPA to review the fi financials. Uh, if you're very good with financials and you have a long history of contract, understanding contracts, you know, it could be where you don't need someone to do that for you. So I'm going to show you some of the awesome resources I gave you here. Uh, in fact, I will put this here. Uh, if you go to this link here, you you have access to all this here. So what I did was I put in here some funding resources for minority owned business. Um, so you can just click on some of these here. You, you want to build your credit. If you need money for contracts, let's look at 25 VCs bridging the gender and ethnic gap for startups. All right. So this is one resource here. If you are a minority-owned business, these are financial resources for you. 